Uh, I get this a lot. Uh, a Filipina comes to the U.S. She is married. She then gets divorced mm -hmm. in the U.S. In the, US. The, vor the divorce is valid under U.S. law. Mm -hmm. She meets an American. Mm -hmm. They get married, which they're entitled to do. The marriage is recognized under U.S. law. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the American would be petitioning her for green card or whatever. She goes to the Philippine consulate and she wants to get her new Philippine passport issued mm -hmm. in the her last name of the, the, the American. American husband. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that Filipina mm -hmm. cannot get a new passport in the name of the new husband. Bawal. Bawal yan. Why? Bakit? Because, yeah. because the divorce that she obtained against the poor Filipino husband in the Philippines mm -hmm. is not recognized in the Philippines. So under Philippine law, that Filipina remains married to the Filipino husband. The only way by which she can revert to her maiden name is for her to have obtained first an annulment against the Filipino husband. It is different if the Filipina has already acquired Philipp uh, U.S. citizenship by other means if she divorced the husband the Philippines when she was already an American citizen, then that can be recognized in the Philippines. So we're talking about two different situations here. The first situation is what you mentioned. The Filipina, while still being a Filipino citizen, divorces the poor Filipino husband the Philippines. How do you know he's poor? Maybe he was cheating and has a second family. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. okay. So, so, so that's the first situation. Right. Maybe that's the reason she came to the U.S. He was cheating on her, and so she was so depressed and wanted know, to get yeah, rid of him. So okay, maybe, I'm just yeah. joking with you, too. Okay, go ahead. So that, that, uh, that uh, divorce mm -hmm. is not... Because we don't have divorce in the Philippines. Right. That's what I say yeah, to uh, people, who Filipino, Filipino women who get married. You have mm -hmm. to be very sure what, maiden, what surname you will use once you get married. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you adopt, the surname of your husband under Philippine law, it'll be very difficult for you to revert to your maiden name. Okay. The only way for you to do that is to either annul the marriage or your spouse dies for whatever reason, mm -hmm. or your uh, marriage gets annulled under Article 36 of the Philippine Family Code, which is psychological incapacity. Those, okay. those are the only ways. All right, so now that leads me to another topic which I found fascinating. Mm. Uh, has to have court proceedings. Yes. And um, there is now a new benefit procedure or law mm -hmm. that Filipinos do not need to appear in person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Philippine court in the Philippines, correct? That's correct. So explain yeah. that. Yeah, okay. So I think it's because of the pandemic also. Okay. It's very difficult for people who, uh, who need to appear in court to, of course, go in person. So our Supreme Court uh, made some innovation. They now allow uh, video conferencing. So meaning if a person here in the U.S. needs to appear in court in the Philippines, uh, and there's a court order already uh, directing the person to appear in court, uh, that person can submit a request to us at least a month before the scheduled hearing that he needs to appear in court. He can request that a video conferencing be held at the Philippine consulate. Okay. So on the date and time that the hearing is supposed to be held in the Philippines, we're talking in real time here. Mm -hmm. He can go to the consulate and we can conduct the video conference. The video conference hearings must be scheduled for between 4 to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday Pacific time. Okay. Yeah. So the Philippine court mm -hmm. has to schedule uh, this particular person's appearance mm -hmm. uh, during those specific hours. That's correct. So they yeah, overlap. Yeah, right. uh, can the person appearing remotely be a party to the action? or only a witness? No, it, it can be a party to the action. Okay, so let's, yeah. let's move yeah. to my Filipina right, yeah. who wants an annulment. Can yeah. she obtain a Philippine annulment mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippines mm -hmm. and be able to make the appearances here in, at the consulate I and would, not have to go back? I would guess so. What he needs to do, what she needs to do is to talk to a Philippine lawyer, who, a Filipino lawyer who can file the annulment case on her behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, then later in the in the course of the of the proceedings, and the reason Filipino mm. is it's a, a, a an attorney licensed to practice mm. Philippine law. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so I would guess so that can be done. Can be okay. done. Yeah. So you can get uh, an annulment. Mm. I, I, that would be a tremendous benefit, like I, because 
you have people who are tago na tago, and of yeah. course they cannot <laughs> go back to the Philippines Correct, yeah. to make appearances yeah, in court. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's a heck of a lot easier than traveling all the way of to course. the Philippines, yeah. uh, especially if you're tago na tago. <laughs> and, and like I said, if, whether it's getting that annulment if she wants, mm -hmm. uh, or disputes over land uh, right, in right. case somebody passes away. And that, Correct, yeah. Which leads me to another question sure. uh, about um, death and bereavement. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to be uh, a downer with people, mm -hmm. but what I see a lot happening is there are the older Filipinos living in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and they pass away mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they still have the connection to the homeland, to, to the Philippines. No matter mm -hmm. how many years they have been in the U.S., right, yeah. no matter uh, whether they're already U.S. citizens, uh, they still consider the Philippines their home. Right. And they want to be buried in the Philippines. In the Philippines, okay? yeah, yeah. So now, the consulate plays a part in that, correct? Yes, we do. Okay, so yeah. now, if a person passes away um, and they their wish was to be buried in the Philippines, mm. what must the family do okay. to make that happen? So uh, the family will have to bring the uh, mortuary certificate to us so that it okay. can be authenticated by the like Philippine Like a death certificate? Consul yes, yes. Okay. So that it can be authenticated by the Philippine consulate with that, that authentication the body cannot be shipped. We're talking about the body or the remains, or the, uh, the cremains. Okay. Okay. That's the only participation of the Philippine consulate. There's a misconception that uh, the Philippine consulate will have to give its permission. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. In fact, bulk of the work of processing all the death-related documents will have to be done by the funeral home. Okay. The final product of that process is the mortuary certificate, which needs to be brought to us for authentication. Mm -hmm. We can do that in under maybe even 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And then one, that, one that's, that's done, then the body or the remains will, can be shipped to the Philippines anytime. And, and unless the consulate uh, processes that, uh, it's almost like a, a customs inspection. Correct, because yeah. if you don't get that certificate, if you bring the body, uh, the Philippine customs will not allow the body that's or the true. remains to enter, yes. correct? Yes, yes. It's okay. a requirement. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, bear that in mind uh, mm -hmm. as one of your last wishes. Right. You know, I have found myself personally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That some of the things that you have said today to be eye-opening and mm -hmm. extremely in informative. Mm -hmm. um, what do you consider as Congen to be uh, most rewarding and mm -hmm. most challenging about your job? Okay, the most challenging. Let's begin with the most challenging. Okay. Most challenging is um, having to serve 1.3 million Filipinos. Okay. under our jurisdiction, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I was in Jeddah before my assignment here. Mm -hmm. And in Jeddah, there were only about 250,000 Filipinos mm -hmm. to be uh, served by the Philippines. But here it's 1.3 million Filipinos mm -hmm. who would like to have their passports and dual citizenship applications to be processed today or yesterday. Yeah. Not today or tomorrow, but yesterday. Well, I think you have my <laughs> clients because they all want their uh, green cards yesterday too. So, okay, so this is a challenge, you know, and there's so many uh, events here to be uh, attended to, but the and there are only 36 of us at the Philippine mm -hmm. So you're talking of one consulate personnel serving maybe about 44, 50,000 Filipinos at any given time. Mm -hmm. But, the, but the, the opportunities, there's so much opportunities here because you have so many Filipinos here who can therefore help us in promoting Philippine trade and investment, and who, who also can help us in promoting Filipino culture, especially during this time mm -hmm. when we are seeing a rising incidence of hate crimes against the AAPI community. I believe that those committing hate crimes are those who fail to appreciate the contributions of the Filipino American to the development of America through mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. And we are just so thankful that we have this big Filipino population under our jurisdiction who can push really the things that we need to push in terms of economic, cultural, and other areas of Philippine interest. I know the important role that the Philippine consulate plays mm -hmm. in, in Filipinos' lives, mm -hmm. in, whether here in LA, around mm -hmm. the US, mm -hmm. around the world. Right. And I, and I commend you for the job uh, mm -hmm. that you and everyone else at the consulate is doing. And mm -hmm. if I, I, I will close with this, like what message would you like to give your Kababayans here in the US? I thank them for the contributions, not just to the, the community here, but to the Filipino nation, because they continue to support the, uh, the country mm -hmm. by way of their contributions in so many ways. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and um, last night I was in a, another uh, Filipino event and I was telling them that I'm calling upon the Filipino community to continue helping our country and I'm sure that they will not fail us. Ang sinasabi ko, you may be able to bring the Filipino out of the Philippines but the Philippines will always be in the heart of every Filipino. Kaya hindi siya mahirap pakiusapan na ipagpatuloy na tulungan ng ating bayan. Especially during this time. Mm-hmm. Okay? And yeah. I, I also know the remittance that the Filipinos yeah. around the world send back home. 10% of our GDP comes from foreign exchange remittances. And bulk of the foreign exchange remittances is coming from the U.S. You're talking of 24 billion U.S. dollars annually. Did you realize that's how much you're sending home to your relatives? <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I want to thank you on behalf of myself as mm-hmm. well as mm-hmm. the entire s- crew of Citizen Pinoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has been an honor to have the Honorable Edgar Vidalhos here. Mm-hmm. You have provided us with a wealth of information, not mm-hmm. just so, simply on immigration. Mm-hmm. I think, right? Um, ownership, dual citizenship, things like that. And I mm-hmm. do want to thank you mm-hmm. so much for helping your Kababayans and providing information here on the show.